comes the Slayer mail. Check it out. It's 10,000 grams. It says GMS. Someone's like, hey, I'm the money. You're searchable as you read the GMS thing for it. Like, oh, that's grams. So are like, are you don't... watching yourself on screen this instead guy, of this guy. talking to me? No, no. I'm, I'll be done in a minute. <laughs> I just want to tell you a funny story. So this guy over here is like, I, I think he's the type of person that has like no sense of humor. And he's like, grams is normally abbreviated with just a G. And I was like, well, that was my uh, production guy. That wasn't me. And he goes, well, whatever you're paying him, it's too much. <laughs> and I was like, really? The rest of the video is pretty beautiful and informative. Sorry he didn't appropriate. You know what? That just, that just goes to show you, dude. It's, it's never, ever, ever <laughs> going to be good enough. Uh, you've been on a cynical kick lately. I've, I've seen some of your, not cynical, I guess, as much. I don't know. No, I'm feeling I'm feeling great here. I was speaking for I was being cynical. I was being I was doing a character. Oh. <laughs> that's not my real that's not that didn't that's come from the soul, Brian. That, no, that was that was a character I was just playing. I was talking about the video I saw you put out where you're like, how do we how do we fix the reptile industry or something like that? That's what I was referring to. Yeah, I, I figured you were talking about that. Like, there's not, it's never good enough. <laughs> right after that. I was like, wow. You okay, Brian? How do we fix the? Well, you know, I wasn't. I wasn't for a minute. Well, I was good with me. I was good with me. I was good with what was happening in, in my life. Mm. I just uh, wasn't good with what was happening out there. And and I already, I, I've already kind of come to a conclusion. There was actually a moment, and I'll, I'll tell you 100% honest. Like there was a moment that day when I thought that I would just not do any of what I'm doing any longer and just like go wow that's pretty big I know <laughs> but it was it was a fleeting moment but it was still a moment yeah where I was like I'm just gonna go and spread the love of God that's that, literally that's what happened put your effort elsewhere and uh, you'd be a big loss in the reptile industry well I know what you're saying because I've had those moments yeah. where it's like how about I just make the snakes and quietly sell them and make a bunch of money and not put out the effort to like promote the hobby mm. you know uh, or promote responsible keeping or, or good philosophies yeah. or ethics or whatever within the hobby because that's the stuff people beat you up about that and your abbreviations of grams right. <laughs> so I went to I went to Bible study the next morning I kind of told the pastor that at that Bible study like what I, would, what I was kind of going through the night before and the day before and he's just like it's like no man uh, you got to mix your secular world with your spiritual world there you go and I was like, oh, yeah, you're right. So that, and, that, and that's when I made that video, after that, because I was, like, on the fence about whether, like, I've, I've got these feelings inside. I'm going to put them on a video and then maybe not put it out. Sure. And then. That's yeah. like what, remember, so many years ago we interviewed Kim. Kim. Yeah. And we're like, how do you deal with all the negativity? And she's like, I type out these long, wordy responses. Yeah. And then delete them. I think about that I never a lot. Send. I think about that a lot. What's up, Izzy? Yeah, we're, yep. we're recording a podcast right now. Stick your head in here. <laughs> Say, hey, Izzy, everybody. For the audio folks, as he just popped his head in, he didn't say anything. But he, <laughs> we are, by the way, w this is the Searchables Reptiles podcast. If you clicked on it somehow and you didn't know th what you were listening to, and I'm Brian Cusco, I'm Garrett Hartle, and we usually kind of start this thing before saying go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he was literally still screwing around with stuff. I think when we started recording, oh, here like, we got it. We have a drink sponsor. Ooh, uh, crack the whiskey open and then tell me about your pastor. Oh, okay. Well, let me tell you about the drink sponsor real quick. Just real quick. Just since he just gave it to me actually in line when I was getting my badge. No way. Uh, yeah, Jason Moose Fryer. He's got oh, a thanks, Jason. Balls, great balls of fryer. Cool guy. Great oh, guy. That's cool. I like that. Yeah. And the uh, bullet rye, he just walked up. He's like, here, have this. I was like, oh, thanks. Never had it before, actually. That's brand new. Uh, yeah. So obviously it was actually for us. Yeah. Um, so, oh, yeah. he. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, that, that part. Good. He. It wasn't just that. It was actually after that. So I, I put the video out after I, after they kind of coached me along. He's like, you know, you got to mix the secular with the, with that, and that's what the world needs. You know, not to not for you to go off somewhere and focus on whatever I was thinking about that night, but to just take one my feelings and put them out there. I was like, all right, yes, yeah, that's, that's what I should do. So I did, and I, I was super apprehensive about it, honestly. Like I was just, I think I mentioned in the video is when you take something that's you're feeling that sensitive about deep down and then you just kind of pour it out there and then put it out there for other people to give feedback on. It Did you get any like abrasive feedback? No, not really. So, so here's what I've noticed. Cause like yeah. you say that, like, you know, that you're being particularly vulnerable in that video or whatever. But from my perspective, it sounded like a message that you've given before. 
So it's kind of funny how, like... I thought that as well, to be fair. I've had that yeah. thought. I was like, I think I've made this video before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, but it is, it's, a, it's an interesting thing coming from somebody who, like, you know, like, we... I, I'm a YouTuber now. I have a vlog and everything. Isn't that weird? <laughs> no. Anyway. It, well, okay. To not me, for me. To me, it's still For is. you, it's probably weird. But not that's for because me. I've been talking about it forever. And you're like, whatever. That's just, you keep saying that. Um, no, it's interesting. The stuff that you put out and you're like, oh, this is good content. And you throw it out there to the world. And then the stuff that you're like, I'm trying to be very, you know, intentional with this message. And you put it out there. And the audience, you know, me being your audience in this case, receives it the same way. I think that's a good thing because I think that it means you probably usually speak from a heart and, and you know, it's not, it's not like, whoa, all of a sudden he is real and normally he's super fake. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Fair like, enough, dude. Fair but that enough. does happen with, with certain YouTubers, you know? <clears throat> but the interesting thing, I guess the, the point that I get from it or that I'm trying to make is that those of us who are sharing parts of our lives, our thoughts, our feelings and stuff with the world publicly like that, as an audience, you never really know which ones people are holding like near and dear and then which ones people are putting out. So I guess just be careful with your criticism because sometimes people are like, I'm, this is really me that I'm putting it on the line. And it might even seem like a silly or a fun video, but that person really cared about that video when they put it out. So if you're like casually giving negative com you know, uh, comments and stuff like that, because that's your opinion or whatever, um, well, it's a fine you line do you some walk. Damage. That's a yeah. fine line you walk because it, you kind of you want comment. Well, you could go. You could just not read comments. That would be an easy fix. Just like just don't read the comments. You don't have to deal with any of that. But then you don't get to interact and get the feedback that you might actually want. I know. I, and I do want like, that. That's why we do it. Yeah. So I I don't know if we mentioned we were at the Tinley Park that's show Joe. right now. I think I just introduced yeah, us and then I was like, <laughs> it's like people randomly groping me <laughs> by my breast. <laughs> so this is interesting because we normally podcast after the show. We tell you how it goes. But this is like Friday afternoon. Everybody's still getting set up. The VIPs are walking around. And I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. If I was going to do an NARBC, regardless of the location, I would be there for Friday vendor setup and the auction Saturday night. Just why you guys are doing this? Yeah, MJ's jumping in. What's up, buddy? Guys. Thank you. I appreciate these one two. One podcaster to the next. Thank you. <laughs> Straight from the bottom. <laughs> you guys are very player. We love you, you guys too. <laughs> nice. Uh, so yeah, so it's kind of funny to set up here. I've we were debating here in the hallway, and I was like, we're in my booth right now. My booth's right there. Yeah, because Freedom Breeder, if you're here at the show, you know, uh, brought so many racks, more racks than the space allows for. Generally, with that many racks, they would set up that big V in the middle of the show, but that wasn't available this time, and it was kind of last minute, so they got like four or five tables, squashed as many racks as they possibly could in there, and then some are like stray on, on the side, and so basically there's no room for me right. where I would usually have my table. There's barely room for you here, and we always have these here, but this show is packed. This show is tight. It's Friday. We don't even have crowds. This is going to be crazy this yeah. weekend. I, and if you guys are listening, when, when are we airing this? Before the show? No. <laughs> are you, what are you crazy? All right, afterwards. We're going to so, go out and have dinner. I'm not going <laughs> to go out. Well, I, I don't know. I don't know what you do. <laughs> you seem like you get a lot of stuff done somehow. Well, I, 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 never really I could get this out before the show. But it, <laughs> if I get this out before the show, there's no way I'm doing video cuts. If this goes up before the show, then there's not going to be a Deep. wide frame and then a U frame and then a me frame. That's not happening. This is a beautiful shot. It is a beautiful shot. And most people are just listening on audio anyway. Yeah. I know it's weird. They might Throw it like, up. Be Throw it up. Them. Throw it up before the show. Because what I was going to say is March shows are usually rumored to be smaller and less going on. Mm. I got to walk around a little bit. There are some crazy reptiles here today. There are a lot of awesome breeders. And the VIP crowd here is freaking hopping. Did you see all the oh, sold yeah. signs on some of our stuff already? Yeah, I know. Yeah, there's it's great. There are a lot of people here. A lot of people. I the cool thing is walking around. I feel like I knew just like almost everybody today. I it's yeah, great. I I think some of it is still we're still coming off this COVID, having not seen anyone for so long. That was the answer I came to. I skipped over. I, I cut myself off to do a little intro and say that we're social reptiles and blah blah blah. But which I which I've always been thinking about recently. I'll tell you about in a little moment what I was thinking about. Here we go. <laughs> but so what I realized is that I was just, you know, Facebook and reptile stuff ends up being 
at least in my experience, a lot of just bad stuff, a lot of negative stuff, yeah. a lot of stuff that drains on my soul. Mm -hmm. And so I just cut it out. <laughs> And now I'm just going to focus on interacting with people in person as much as possible and just like put out the stuff with my kids and family and, and then interact when I can with people in person and, and do, focus on that. I would say that that's a way better first step to kind of like correct, you know, what you're talking about than leaving all together. Like yeah. you said, don't read the comments. What would happen? I always read the comments. Too. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so because you do want the community yeah. and 90% of it is great. 10% of it, you know, is, well, I'd say 9.5% of it is negative. And then that 0.5 bugs you, mm. you know what I mean? It gets to you. I think that the ones that bug you are probably the ones that are based in some sort of truth. Maybe. Yeah. Or, or like for me, it's always the thing where it's like, oh, that's what everyone says. You can't see the truth. And that frustrates me. Do you know what I'm saying? No. Um, like, okay, if I was a girl and I put out a YouTube video of doing sports and then someone, and it was this awesome video and I was very accomplished and I did all kinds of awesome things, and then someone would throw up there like, girls aren't good at sports. <laughs> and I would well, just be like, screw that, you, asshole. Well, that's, <laughs> you, did that's you not even the watch truth. the video? Okay. Well, that but, part, that, that type of comment is not the truth because girls are yeah, obviously I, good at probably sports. Probably the truth stuff hurts more, right? and I can get what you're saying, but I think the ones that bug me are the ones where it's like people have their opinions without allowing new information to come in and they just give you their ignorant opinion constantly. You mean when you turn an opinion into a fact in your mind? Yeah, like girls aren't good at sports. Yeah. And you're like, that's not truth at all. But to that prejudiced person, it is. So I, I, maybe, it's, maybe it's the prejudice that bugs me. I guess me. you could say girls are not as good at sports as guys <laughs> for at least some sports. Well, now we're getting into the whole politically correct yeah, I, realm I didn't, of I didn't the Olympics want to. and transgender and is that right or wrong or how's that work and you know and the, the truth of the matter is I think I could compete against any of the women Olympics and lose horribly. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Those girls are pretty damn no, good at sports. I'm talking general. I'm generalizing. I'm not talking. Yeah, there's obviously women out there that could beat us at any sport yeah. the two of us well and then and then i would actually love to see like all inclusive sports things because i think there are it would be interesting to me to see the ones that women are better than men mm. at, because i think there's a lot of them. yeah there's probably some you know what i mean <laughs> so, hey I tried to give him high five. He was way excited on that side. This is actually pretty exciting. It is. We got Dude. everybody watching, especially since you're right here in the back in corner, the middle of and the we show. keep in the middle of the show, and people keep yeah, like rounding the through. corner, yep. and as they come around the corner, they see us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's funny. And look at these tiny little Glen Cairn glasses. This thing is so cute. It's a little super dwarf glass. Oh, I'd also like to take a moment to like apologize. I'd like to apologize about the audio in the last one. We're never recording with a phone again. <laughs> no matter oh, really? what. Recording yeah, it was just it was just so echoey and just just because of the phone, you know, oh, for Blake. Is that on Blake's episode? Yeah, because we needed the third mic last yeah. minute. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's all right. We'll ne we'll never Sorry, do that Blake. again. It's all right. I just, <laughs> I just realized that. That was a fun episode though. It was. It was. Here's another Blake over here. What's up, Blake Wilson? What's up, bro? Hey, buddy. So, there was a. Uh, what was the other thing I was going to tell you about? There was one other thing I was going to tell you about. Shirt. You can hear everyone happy and hugging behind us. I love these shows. Yeah. These are, this is, this are these the best shows. So, you know why I'm really excited about the show? Why this show is different from me than any other show I've ever done? I think you already know. Wait, wait, wait. This show is different than any other show you've ever done? Because ever. Of, because of Joe? Yes. So, we got G.I. Joe here. This was such. I don't know if people realize what a big deal this was. We did make a video about it, but jo me hiring G.I. Joe, like I have a great staff and almost every single one of my hires are probably better at doing their job than I would do. I would say that's definitely true of like Rob, Hadley is amazing. Even Tim is like the man when it comes to scrubbing those snake dishes. He just gets in there and puts his nose to the grindstone and like hammers it out. You know, my wife with her organizational skills, handling the Patreon community, and then she also does all the swag for us. Everybody's better than me. Thomas? Thomas, oh yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um, 
yeah, like light years ahead of me on the production oh side. And I love that I can like let those guys run with it. But I've always done the sales thing. So for people that don't know the structure of my organization or whatever, I just hired Joe as a full-time sales guy. That is my background. Yeah. So it's really hard to that's let go That's your main of. role in the company, I would say. And I feel like that's because of my sales and marketing background, that's why we have the type of company that we have. That background has structured everything that we do. So it's the last thing I handed off. And obviously a big trade show like Tinley is kind of the pinnacle of your marketing for the year. Not necessarily sales. Like if we sell some snakes, cool. But I don't care if we sell at the show. But I want to get to know people at the show, and I want them to get to know us, the real us, here at the show, right? So handing it over to Joe was a big deal, but we rolled up. Joe and I went through this whole booth at the shop back at home. We set it up, we did the whole thing, we came up with all our systems and strategies and everything that we were gonna do. And then we came in here, I said, here's our thing, I'm gonna have, you know, I made a decision like, Rob, you unload the truck, Joe, you stay here, watch the snakes, tell everyone else what to do and I left yeah I noticed that and I came back it was actually really hard and super exciting too and it wasn't too bad three snakes died and we locked our keys in a running van <laughs> that we then had to break into but other than that Joe's laughing at me because he's like neither of those were my fault <laughs> but it's all your responsibility now Joe Ooh. cheers <laughs> But um, uh, everyone's wondering if I'm joking right now, but we did actually lose three snakes. On the trip? Yeah, traveling oh, here. No, I was... I, someone, you mean like physically? They died. Oh, they, they passed away. Three snakes died in transit Dang. coming to the show. Rough. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. So I've actually never had that happen before. Yeah, I didn't think you had. No, but I drove the moving truck, and then we had like the van full of people, and the the animals were in their containers and then the top container was like stacked up high enough in the trunk that a little sunlight was coming in oh. and even though it was cold you know yeah, it was a the cold direct trip sun. yeah but the direct sun had this greenhouse so like three snakes in this corner got oh, bummer, cooked and for anyone wondering the hardest the worst part of anyone with any animal business is when you lose animals yeah obviously. we got here and everyone's laughing and joking around, yay, it's gonna be Tinley. And then we kind of like spread the, at the Airbnb last night, spread the thing out. And I can't remember if it was Tim or Rob that was like, we got dead snakes here. And I was like, what? And I, like I had all my containers stacked up and it was like right on the top and like half of them were dead. So we were there as Blake Wilson. But I was, um, yeah, you just, your heart sinks. And yeah. you're like, uh oh, they're dead. And how many are dead? Are all of them dead? Why are they dead? What's going on? And your mind just races. And this was super unfortunate because they're babies. They had their whole, should have had their whole lives in front of them. You know, it's hard enough to lose like an old animal, you know, that you knew. But I don't know if you have, if you keep this many animals, you're gonna know. Like, and they, unfortunately, they just don't live forever. Yeah, I fortunately haven't had one pass for over a year now, um, which is nice. I hate it. <laughs> yeah. I hate it. It's absolutely the worst part. The whole night, everyone's like, yeah, it's just like, I think nobody said anything for like an hour in the Airbnb. Yeah. You know? It was just like, ugh. Yeah, it's like the end of the Avengers movie, but you haven't even started the show yet. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, that that was just it. It was, yeah, it was so tainted emotions going into this one. But um, it is really wonderful to see everybody and... Uh, and all that kind of stuff. So, Well, on that note, uh, the thought I was thinking about Social Reptiles, I thought this several times in the past couple weeks. I was like, it's a stupid name. <laughs> I knew it was stupid, right? But like but way before we ever started. I just thought that was kind of your MO. So I was like, whatever. Yeah, well, I mean... It, it, so you've now also, after everyone else in the world have decided that this is a stupid name. I have finally tell me. agreed. But... Well, because because of one of our segments has just become like such a cool, like it's our biggest, it's our only segment, and it's, I feel like we could easily name the podcast that. Diving deep in the shallow. Diving end? deep in the shallow end, yeah. 
I think that's way more fitting. I don't know if, about, if how I feel about changing. I'm the not saying no. We can't change it now. Podcast. No, I'm not saying we can't change it now. This is what this is kind of what this ties in with what I was talking about or what we were talking about at the very beginning. Like, I'm not going to change it now. We're just going to keep going and just try to make it better despite... Sorry, everyone. We totally should have named this Diving Deep in the Shallow End. Hindsight's 2020. However. Rob says that's my new nickname, by the way. Hindsight. Oh. Yeah. I thought you meant Diving Deep in the Shallow End. I think both of those could go... You put those together and you got a Rob party. <laughs> it's right up Rob's Shallow End. Oh, man. Speaking of which, I contemplated that, that I would come up with the first Diving Deep in the Shallow End uh, segment or idea. Yeah. Thought about it a lot. So much that I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah? Was yeah. it good? Because I have one. Oh, no. Mine, like, I thought about it so much that I didn't actually come up with one. All right, crew. So we're going to hold Brian to it. He has to come up with a Dive Deep in the Shallow End for the next episode. How about that? Fair enough. All right, here's mine. You know the old saying, you are what you eat classic if i could make that true for you today how far would you be willing to go in other words if you want if if you could become whatever you ate how far would you be willing to go if you want to be superman for example i have to eat superman all of him all of cannibalize the entire body Mm. and then you could be superman would you do it Do you like this one? No. I thought this was a good No, I, I mean, I don't, I don't like it, and I also, but my answer is no to both. No, I don't like it, and I, I don't see myself eating Superman. Well, to become Superman? I don't know. Then there's all those responsibilities. You, you, got, you got to really, that's a lot of responsibilities. I like this question. I don't know why. It's so weird. I was just thinking about the things that I have eaten today. <laughs> I ate a good amount of nuts. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> and, no, I, I don't think I would do the Superman. You have something eat. right here in your teeth is probably a piece. It's of probably nuts. a piece of nut. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I got nuts in my teeth. No, you you are what you eat. You can literally become anything you want with this wish. The caveat is, you must eat it. Uh, I've really come to love enjoying being a human, or not love it, but like I really appreciate my humanness, like the whole like pretty flexible and uh, dexterous. Phalanges, those are pretty helpful. Okay. I, I really enjoy my ability to speak when I exercise it properly and form good sentences that flow well together, that people understand and can communicate my deepest inner thoughts. So you don't want to be me. <laughs> I, but I'm I, safe for now. But I don't want to consume any humans either. <laughs> Well, like anything. You, it can be literally anything. I know, but I don't know that I want to be anything other than human. So say you could, whatever you ate, you could add it to your repertoire. Like I could still be human and then yeah. I could eat like... Yeah, but you can like take... So like I eat the nuts and now I'm a human and I'm nuts. Well, that we already said you've accomplished. Yeah. So, but is that, is that what you mean? Like if I eat nuts, then I can be human and a, a nuts human? I don't know. This question went way better in my head when I <laughs> thought of it than it actually is now well, that I say it out loud. Well... <laughs> Well, I just thought it was absurd to eat Superman. Yeah, that is absurd. <laughs> it's totally absurd. I, I, like, because it's, it's, I'm kind of changing. That to be changing it. Like now, I'm gonna be acquiring the powers of whatever it is I eat. Yeah, yeah, that kind of. Yeah, how about that? Ooh, I would definitely eat spiders. <laughs> I have eaten spiders. Everyone does. Eight a year in your sleep. Uh, on purpose. Oh, okay. Salted. Really? Mm-hmm. When and where? At Freedom Breeder in the baby breeding room on video. I missed right, miss that one. Right I have uh, also purposely eaten spiders. Yeah. Yeah, but it was like in the jungle and it was a tarantula. Yeah, it was tarantula. Cooked it over cold. So. Yeah, that's the same thing with me. It's tarantula. Did you cook it? I didn't cook it, but somebody you else. You ate a whole tarantula? Uh huh. Wait, did you like cook it for real, like the way they normally do when they eat tarantulas? No, it was just like, it was just dried and salted. Weird. Yeah. Like you order it that way? Someone prepared it? I'm pretty sure I got it at a either, I def- definitely got it at a U.S. Arc auction. I don't remember what show it was at, but I 100% got it at a U.S. Arc auction. Oh, weird. It was. Okay. It came, it was, it was, it was python jerky and the, the dehydrated, or not dehydrated, but, you know, dried and salted sp- uh, tarantula. So was it like the full body of yeah. exoskeleton and everything? Uh-huh. Oh, that's not how I ate it. Okay, well, I don't, wouldn't recommend the way I ate it. <laughs> the way I ate it was great. 
especially as someone who's like allergic to shellfish, can't eat shrimp. Mm. Tarantula tastes like shrimp, oh, but I wasn't allergic no, to no. it. No, no, my experience was nothing, was not shrimp like whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, so was, what they did was they. It was like crunchy. Mine was like uh, pork rinds with a lot of fine fur on them. <laughs> Sounds like eating someone's beard trimmings. Yeah, that's what it was like. It was like eating somebody's crunchy beard trimmings. Totally That's nasty. Disgusting. It was very disgusting. So mine was awesome. Where well, they caught a bunch of tarantulas, and then, like, they're all females because that's you go find them in their burrows and dig them up. A bunch of them were gravid. I don't know if that's the right word. I think so. Um, and they they pulled all the eggs out of them and they put it in like one banana leaf. And it was super weird because the eggs go in and they're like these little balls, and then they fold it up and they set it on some coals of a fire in this banana leaf, and then when you open it, it looks like an omelet, like a chicken egg omelet. It's like yellow. Yeah, and it tastes like a chicken egg omelet. It was super, so it was so weird. And then I thought that would be actually a really fun way to make an omelet if I ever had a chicken and a banana leaf and a fire, but, uh, or I guess a chicken egg. But the way they then cook the tarantulas, they like tie all the legs back behind them, and they roll them around on the coals, which like burns all the Hairs. The hairs off, ah. and it cooks them inside. So, like, if, if you can imagine eating crab legs, which everyone that's retching in their car right now, eating a tarantula really is a lot like eating crab legs. I mean, one lives in the water, one doesn't. They're not that different. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. So, so cockroaches are like shrimp, and, yeah. Yeah, but that, I haven't tried that one for myself. But, but yeah, so um, that's what they did. They rolled it around. So the only difference is you eat the whole thing because the exoskeleton of the tarantulas brittle enough to just eat and the crab is not but the meat inside tastes like crab or shrimp or something else i feel alcoholic with these tiny (laughs) because you keep pouring i thought the same thing four now (laughs) super dwarf cairns yep they uh i I also brought you some eagle rare too you are the man (laughs) i love you i've been wanting it so bad i just watched on our video there was a shot that had like the little liquor stash in the back and I was like, oh, there was Eagle Rare at that time. That nut is still in your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to, I mean, do you, do you want to pick it out with a knife? Like, I'll just use my finger. Here we go, Brian. Hold still. I don't want to hurt your gums there. Oh man, no wonder it's still in there. I can't get this out. This is kind of feeling weird all of a sudden. Oh. <laughs> Got it. Okay, I was about to give you the knife. That's super gross. You're 100% the first and only, and I would like to say ever man that's ever picked something out of my teeth. I feel really weird about it. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I'm surprised how comfortable I was. Well, I'm not surprised, I guess. I, it, it was fine. I, I usually am comfortable with things like that. But well, I, I had a like thing in there. It needed fixing, around. and I, so, you know, you fixed it. It's good. Thanks. Maybe, maybe it's the fourth glass that's turning my face red. Fourth, the fourth glass What's turning up? your face red and not the thing. Yep. Not the, not the digging out of my... <laughs> <laughs> it could be. I actually feel okay about it now. Yeah. <laughs> that's fine, you know? I, I, think, I think, actually, Hillary is the only other person that has ever picked something out of my teeth for me. Oh, I don't know if Ashley has ever picked anything out of my teeth. That's, that's probably not something that humans usually do. Oh, come on. I'm sure humans do it all the time. Pick things out of each other's teeth? Yeah. They literally is constantly picking stuff out of if my teeth. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, comment below. Have you, do you guys let people pick things out of your teeth? That's kind of weird. If you're not watching this on YouTube, then let us know if someone... We do have a Facebook... Uh, and then comment further. Have you ever let your friend of the same sex go ahead and just grab your head and pick something out of your teeth? I don't know that that happens a lot. We're getting laughed at by some of our uh, Reach Out Reptiles booth visitors over here. <laughs> it's good. It's like, good. Oh Li- live entertainment. We're making entertainment for folks that are listening, watching, recorded, and live. This reminds me of the, sh- the episode that we did at the Super Show where Rami let us stay late and, uh, and gave us a bottle of scotch and everything. And, like, everyone was closed. He told the whole security team, leave those two guys alone. And we just sat and we had, like, an entire reptile show to ourselves. Mm-hmm. And we did the podcast. That was cool. Yeah, it's like that, except now, now the people are still people here. People are everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Well, even during that one, like, people were walking out as we started. So. Mm. Yeah, true. That was pretty cool. But, yeah, I, I am, uh, you know, have had some drama within the reptile industry myself recently. And so I can definitely relate to what you're doing. And a lot of it was like, you know, it's funny you go to these shows and those people are going to be at this show. So I've never been one to like back down from confrontation, so to speak, or anything. Not like I was ever going to get in a fight. 
but just, you know, like words are said and stuff like that. And so I was thinking about how I was going to approach it. And the main kind of perpetrator or whatever was one of the first people to talk to me when I came out. And he was like, I'm sorry, you know. And that's what I'm talking about. That right there, just being able to have a face-to-face. And in mm-hmm. person, it makes all the difference in the world. Yep. Like, like phone calls are great, but just being able to stand face-to-face with somebody changes so much. I agree. So I agree. much. So I don't know if that person, I don't think they probably listen to this podcast. But I do appreciate that. That was, uh, that was big. You know what I mean? That was like big boy stuff. Yeah. Came up, said, I, said that he was sorry. Um, and, uh, you know, and then, and then went on to apologize, like, look, you know, like, sometimes this kind of thing triggers me, and I, I react like that, and I shouldn't have done that. And so it was cool. Yeah. It was, I love that. It's great. I, I yeah. felt the same way when I got I here. That. I didn't have anything like that. I didn't have anything personal that was happening anywhere within the community. It was just more of a, a yearning and longing for something that seems to be unattainable for our species, which is for everybody to get along all the time seems to be virtually unattainable, at least from my understanding, what I've seen. It's funny because uh, for a long time I felt like I was the type of guy that did get along with everybody. But then it, I, it started to become, like, I think I was just maybe too self-absorbed, but like people would start to say, well, I don't get along with you at all. And I'm like, oh gosh, you don't? Why not? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, how can you be waging this I... one-way war against me? <laughs> oh. You yeah, because I really do. I like I love everybody. I think everyone does so many cool things, and you know, so people like I hate this guy and I like that guy. But generally, I'm I'm kind of like everybody's good for something. So if you just focus on what those people are doing really well, you can celebrate with them and share life, you know. And then when they do something bad, realize I have also done things bad. So it's totally fair that they do bad things sometimes. And what would I do? It, like, what would I want if I had done something poorly or, or terribly or, you know what I mean, embarrassingly or whatever? I, mean, I would want other people to, yeah, overlook it or forgive it, you know, and, and do that kind of thing. So that's generally where I'm at. But, yeah, what happened was like a, it was like a group chat social media thing like you're talking about. And that one person said something and then two or three people also chimed in like, yes, we also hate you, this about you. And I was like, Wow. So that's kind of like the truth thing that you were talking about, I think, in the comments, even though this wasn't comments, it was people talking to me. Um, and so I need to now, like that guy squared it up, but I would like to go talk to these other people that had issues because I'm like, I, I didn't know there was an issue, you know? Yeah. But I'm also like pretty blind to anything going on around me. You've also got a lot going on. True. So you're, so you're distracted from... But I guess what I'm doing is causing problems for people, and then the way that I'm approaching it is not appreciated. Oh, well, I'd like to know the specifics now. I mean... Not the people, but, like, what you were doing that was causing problems. Super dwarves are new. Yes. Well, no. No, you're right. They're not. But the market for them is. Yes. So they have a, a good new market now, and so that's changing things. So without being, like like uber specific or whatever like we're trying to blaze this new market and other people are feeling like either in by doing that we're stepping on them or hurting their thing or or encroaching into their territory their customers their whatever like other people with snake stuff gotcha and i'm just like some people that were selling super doors before you were selling super doors nope not super door people at all oh other stuff but huh. super doors are growing, and so they're absorbing customers from other people, obviously. Oh. Yeah, I noticed that like some people bought some super dwarves instead of buying some of my ball pythons from me. Yeah, that's... I, that's, I don't like you, Garrett. Well, that's kind of like... <laughs> yeah, that was kind of like what happened. Yeah, that was pretty much it. So, um, it wasn't ball <laughs> python, guys. And if everyone's thinking, which ball python breeder said that? It wasn't ball pythons. But, but my thing was like, I love the stuff that you guys do. I have no... Like, you know, like, I don't know. I got to go visit Justin Kabilka. I love that guy. Oh, my God. Does he do so many cool things? Yeah, Justin. You know what I'm saying? Justin's pretty he's not a He's not a god or anything like that. He has his, he's a human. He has his own shortcomings, all that stuff. But he has done really, really well in an area where a lot of us in the industry want to do well. Mm-hmm. So I cherish the ability to have a candid conversation with the man. And we, we work with very different species. But I have no problem... If someone that is like my good ball python customer gets, or, or, or Superdorf customer gets a ball python from Justin, this is not, he's not the guy we were talking about. I know. But 
you know, and I, I would be amazed to see that, you know, if he was mad at me because someone, I think what it is is like this person has 5,000 bucks, they're going to buy a snake. What do they buy? And they bought the Superdorf. You know, then the next person with a couple thousand bucks walks by and what do they buy? They bought the Superdorf. Yeah, they bought the well, Superdorf. I mean, and, so, and some people, I think, started to get mad. And then, to my problem, they were talking about the issues they were having and I offered advice. And I think that's what didn't go over well. Like, uh, don't tell me. Don't tell me how to do it. Don't tell me what to do. The problem was, and I was trying to do it like genuinely saying like, because I felt like I was coming at it from oh, their well, this, perspective. Oh well, this was this was a text-based communication situation. Oh yeah, 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 big time. And I was trying to say, you know, I felt like um, like you and me are in the same boat. We have our reptiles. We love our reptiles. We want other people to love our reptiles and participate in our community. So I said, this is what's worked really well for me. That was my perspective. I think their perspective was, here's this guy that's trashing my business, my sales, my ethics, whatever, right? That's how they were taking it. And now he's going to come tell me how to run my business too and look down on me. And not, that wasn't not, my not intention. Not trashing it. Like- no, no, no. I'm just trying to see their perspective. I think that was their perspective, that they were feeling like abandoned by me or uh, belittled by me or, you know what I'm saying? Like I had by elevating the snakes that I work with was putting theirs down. Yeah. I, kind of. Yeah, and then I no, offered I advice, I business advice to them because they were talking about the, the struggles they had with sales and stuff. Yeah. And, I can, and it just wasn't I can be sympathetic to that a bit. I but actually, it, I understand where they're coming from. Yeah, I, I can too. I, I, I feel, well, if I, if I do understand it right, then I'm under, maybe I'm understanding it wrong. But the type of image I get based on the story you were just telling me I think of you ever seen the movie The Point I haven't oh you gotta watch this movie it's great yeah. it's from the 70s has great Henry, Harry Nielsen like does the soundtrack oh, cool. oh you know Harry Nielsen though mm-hmm. perfect yeah you gotta watch, check out The Point watch it with the kids whatever it's great it's about a kid named Oblio who is born in a world where everything has a point sorry there man or it's, it's their, their community their town their, their, their whole way of life all revolves around ha- having a point and they don't having not, a point. having a point like not, what's not your figuratively point? Like no not figuratively but like literally they, everybody has a pointed head everything has points <laughs> like the dog has a point like all the, they play this game called triangle toss and the triangle obviously has points okay. and, the, and everything has a point but he's born without a point uh-huh. round head weird and he, he wears a little cone on his head so that he can fit in with everybody <laughs> And he's playing so the game. A very metaphorical movie. Yeah, and it's but it's great. He goes on this journey. He he ends up getting banned from the town by the by the it, how he gets banned is he's playing this game called you know the triangle toss game. He does really well at it with him and his dog. Yeah, he ends up beating the the count's son. The count it, his son is very you know privileged and his father is fairly despicable i would say okay to say the least and you know the son definitely caught some of those and he's like well this kid's doing good at this game he doesn't have a point he doesn't even have a point he was not bad he shouldn't even be here everything here has to have a point and because he's doing well at this game and ma- making made, him not, not look enemies. as good yeah. and it's like yeah it made an enemy and ended up getting him kicked out which that's the type of person i think about when you share a story like that yeah 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 it's crazy it's crazy. It does dishearten me a little bit, though, because you want to, like, push ahead and advance things. But, uh, somebody was saying it to me. I think it was a Mark Twain quote. I could be wrong. but he, he, <laughs> I feel like Mark Twain quotes are all over the place. I always find myself being like, is that really one? Are fake. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, someone was saying that, that he said, uh, like, oh, I love change. Or, no, I, I love, um, what was it? I love advancement. I just hate change. You know what I mean? Or something like that, you know? Yeah, that doesn't sound like something Mark Twain would say. No, I'm saying it wrong, too. It wasn't advancement. Whatever. It was progress. That, that was, yeah, I love, that's what, that was it. Oh. I love progress. I just hate change. <laughs> you know? And, change is scary. Change, and change is, is hard. That is a, a human quality, you know? But, but, so here's the thing with the reptile industry. We are up against it. Yes. We're up against it. We're being attacked constantly because people don't understand us. And I think probably all of us are like the kid with a round head in your video. You know what I mean? Where we are different. We don't fit in. And honestly, I, a lot of reptile people I know take solace with the reptiles because they also are misunderstood. Mm. And so that can, we connect with them in a way that other people 
just hate and deplore them from the beginning. And then we feel like, you know what? I think people like judge me, hate me, deplore me from the beginning too. Maybe I'll give this animal a chance. And then you find out how wonderful they are. And it's, it's uh, wholesome. It's satisfying to your soul, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's how we get into these reptiles. So I always, like my thing was always, and I think there's a lot of people for a lot of reasons. The reptile industry is so huge now. This isn't the case for everyone. But at least traditionally, I think it was in the reptile industry. It always appeared to a very alternative culture. Um, and so, yeah, like for me, it was always like the large and venomous species because they were hated and feared and everything else. And so, so I like that. But um, it's tough because we're up against it. And kind of to go full circle, you were saying sometimes comments, reactions on YouTube and things are hurtful when they're true. And it's probably hurtful because we hate the fact that we see that we need to change. Mm. And I think the people that hate us have a point a lot of times. But they also don't understand us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So someone might say about the three snakes that died in transit that because three snakes died in transit on the way to the show to me that I see the animals as a commodity that I'm okay with a certain amount of loss if I can sell 97% of them and lose 3% that's fine with me and it, they don't understand that is not fine you know I feel awful about that no one in my, in my entire crew will ever make a mistake like that again you know what I'm saying with yeah. a lesson so poignant but it did happen and we need to learn from that and the people that would be against the reptile industry that are fighting against it, but that would be a point for them. That, that, those animals wouldn't have died had it not been for... Those are disposable pets. And yeah. those are the comments I hate because you were like, that is not the way it is anymore. It might have been that way once upon a time where you buy the enclosure, you put a pet like a green iguana in there and it dies in six months from improper care. So you just buy another one because they're 10 bucks. But that is not the reptile industry that we have today. De definitely not. Not at all. Not because of close. all the progress that we've made. And it's failing to be recognized by mainstream society. I love, first of all, the progress that we are making. You get companies like, you ever talk to Ryan McVeigh from VivTech about no, never. <laughs> how passionate you mention UVB lighting with him and do reptiles need it? Oh my God, you're going to be there for an hour and he'll be crying two. and yelling by the end of it. Uh, two, maybe two and a half. Yeah, I yeah, but I love that. He's so passionate about animals having good lighting. And the rest of us probably need to wake up and see what he's talking about. Mm, light. <laughs> ah, ding. So, um, yeah, I, anyway, I, I, we're, we're up against it right now. I tell, I'll tell you what, it is cool that so much of the reptile industry has become organized, become very professional. Yeah. And, and had a voice with the mainstream. Honestly, like we're sitting in front of these U.S. Arc banners. Can I talk about U.S. Arc for a second? Uh, I mean, if you have to. I have to. I've never talked about U.S. Arc before. I have to. Too passionate. Um, you know, obviously they like re have rebranded and they're doing a lot of things and they're, and they're doing this stuff. But one thing about U.S. Arc, if you really want to know what's up with them, like I just had someone say, I'm going to, it's overdue. I'm going to go get my membership today. I'm like, what? You don't have a U.S. Arc membership? You've been breeding for a decade. What are you doing? How are you not a US ARC member? Well, but, don't start shaming people into US ARC. I don't, I, no, 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 I, I don't like it anymore. That's, <laughs> I'm, I'm okay, I'm not trying to shame anything, but I'm just saying like, I don't think people recognize the value that that organization brings us. Huh. More, I think more re realizing it on, on a regular basis. When especially. they're terrified. Yeah, yeah. Well, the great thing is, I mean, you are about to, dedicate half of your film crew well, to... So that's what, I, that's what I wanted to talk about. These banners actually that are behind us, uh, Stuart Design printed for us for free. They did re US Arc's rebrand for free, which mm -hmm. is... I mean, you, you I know. know. It's very expensive and it's a lot of work. Um, but he gave us these for free to use as a backdrop um, because we're going to start a YouTube channel for US Arc. It's not going to be our YouTube channel. I want to make that very clear. It's a US Arc's channel. We're going to contribute stuff to it and obviously we're using your equipment for these first couple of videos that go up on the thing so i'd love it to be a community effort that was always the idea but i felt like if it needs to get done you need somebody to say i commit to making weekly content and we so we've committed to do that for a year nice um i'm really I, i'm really excited to see how it goes man 
Yeah, and it's I'm, not it's not anything crazy or, or different from like what they're doing. We may do some outside of the box. It's not gonna be like a YouTuber type channel, but even the things like I know I myself don't go to usart.org to get all of the, my updates, and they put a ton of updates. Well, on I've there. got the I get the I'm on the mailing list, so I always get an email every so time. So am I. You know how many other emails I get? Sure. So I just don't I just don't absorb it. And I think there's other people that don't get their mail that way, but but a lot of people, a, a larger number of people do pay attention to what's going on on YouTube. So when we start this channel, I would love to encourage everybody subscribe and, and definitely get notified. Hit that notification bell because when content goes out, it's gonna be something that is relevant to the reptile industry and us staying a part of it forever. You should probably get everybody that has a YouTube presence involved in some way or form on that channel. Oh, like, I would love to do that. Not yeah. just on it, but like, you know, shouting it out and, and yes. yeah doing a, a collaboration I, there's no reason that that channel shouldn't have a collaboration with basically everybody that has a YouTube I'm fine with that presence yeah I yeah. think that would be great yeah. but it's not about like seeing those YouTubers and celebrity stuff it's and everything just like to get the more about, attention on what's happening with yeah US it's and about the message the US and delivering the, first... the, the US Arc messages which change and update right and delivering them with with accuracy regularly so people can stay updated but to your point like uh, we have a small YouTube channel I do um, Me too. Yeah, comparatively. I know a lot of people are like, oh, I love you guys. You have thousands and thousands of viewers, right? But, and I'm, I'm very grateful for that. But the impact of that kind of a channel, like if we get 1,000 views, 2,000 views, 5,000 views on a video, it doesn't have a, a world-changing impact. So, um, yeah, I've already reached out to some of our friends. Like we talked to Ed and Emily from Snake Discovery earlier who have a massive channel and a lot of impact and I, I told them what I was trying to do because uh, I'm personal friends with them right so like I think all of us that were that took part in their thing was um, but I asked them I'm going to put in this effort will you guys please ask all of your viewership to act on on this that if you like what we do you don't even have to have a reptile but like they've got millions of viewers right I'm sure lots of them don't have reptiles but like what Ed and Emily do, if you want them to keep doing their thing, please go subscribe to this USR video and, you know. I'll tell you one thing too though, something about subscribership that the way YouTube at least seems to work, you don't just want to have subscribe, you want to have viewership. So that's where the challenge is really going to be on you this next year. And I'll help you wherever I can, yeah. like wherever I can, ideas, whatnot. Viewership is more important than some subscri subscriptions. Yeah, it really is. So, yeah. in fact, it could be harmful if you have a bunch of subscribers that aren't watching all the videos. Right, right. So, well, and it's not to build a fake community. It's for everyone that is actually in the real community to back this effort, as they have backed US Arc. Yeah, we all should be. That's why it's shocking to me when someone hasn't. Well, because see that, I don't understand how important it is. And my thoughts, I'm thinking strictly from a YouTube standpoint here and, and like performance well on, on the channel, not for ad revenue, but just so that it's a successful venture for US Arc. Yep. The content has to be something that is going to grab people. So you have to balance that entertainment, information, delivery very well. Well, you're really laying it on me now, man. I'm starting to re rethink this. <laughs> well, I mean, if you wanted to do well, man, because you have to, you have to realize. If, if they needed so someone who knew how to do YouTube well, they probably wouldn't have accepted my offer to help. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just saying, everybody, the world's attention span collectively has gone down exponentially. Not only that, but through social media, through through the internet, people are being bombarded with content. There's there's an absolute content lake out there right now sure. and so it has to be something that people are willing to spend some time watching and it has to and for it to be that it has to be something something they need to know something that needs to be known and it has to be delivered in a way that it's entertaining i'm not saying sure. i know exactly how to do that but i'm saying that that is what needs to be for Honestly, it to be successful when we saw the best growth of my channel it was when i was new which i think is the opposite of most people most people start really slow and then grow big but one part of it you know, our friend Adam Wicken from Wicken's Reptiles is great at this. Feedback. We're talking about be careful with your criticism because you can hurt people where they really care about stuff. I very much care about my ability to continue to keep reptiles in the future. 
Um, and so I care about USR. But um, Adam did really good with feedback. So if people who care log on, you know, subscribe and all this kind of stuff, and then give us constructive criticisms, cr criticism that can help us, like, oh, I love this, but I, I, you know, can you talk about that? Or, hey, I would love to see this person on this channel. You know, and even more than that, if they are, let's say, a Patreon uh, community member of that person or, or a follower or something, reach out to that person and say, can you please feature yourself on USR to support the reptile industry? That'd be great. The bigger we can make it, the better. And you're right. It needs to be legitimate and an active community. But if we start, I think my YouTube channel, like the Reach Out Reptiles one, is something like 25,000-ish subscribers right now. Which we're happy with. That's 25,000 people that care about superheroes. I'm happy about that. Um, US Arc needs to be so much bigger than that, though. And so, if I make this channel and it has only 25,000 subscribers, and then US Arc goes to represent the entire reptile industry, and this is their official channel, and they've got 5,000 subs and a congressman is looking at that and saying, how big is this organization? Do they actually count? When everyone's saying that they count, well, that they care, how many people are there? The danger of having a channel like this and the power of it together uh, is people can judge you immediately based on your number of views. How many times do you, when you're on YouTube, let's say you're looking at something that's not the reptile industry, like I like looking at automotive and engineering videos and stuff, I don't know why, but that's what I look at, or science stuff, on YouTube. And if there's a video, and it has like no views, and that, that channel has no subscribers, I'm less likely to, to care or watch that than someone that has a ton of viewers. Because I'm like, obviously this person's quality, and a lot of people think so. Yeah, there's definitely logic in that. Although there are certainly diamonds out there that, I've been doing this a lot recently, actually, looking at things I've never looked at on YouTube. Um, you know, this Spartan race I just did, I'm trying to look at ways to do it better on the next time. And there's grip strength and proper hydration and ways to train and run beforehand. So I'm looking at things I've never looked at before on YouTube in, in that sense. And there's definitely videos out there that have like only a few viewers and it's not bad information at all. No, in fact, I get no, really good information it. from it. But those guys are easy to find when you're, they're within your niche. Yeah. You know, like I, I know good reptile content. Yeah. So well, if I've seen I know a reptile saying, channel though. that's smaller, you have to have a I big, love that. I know what you're saying. Yeah, Having a big view count and subscriber count will give legitimacy to US Arc on another yeah. platform. It, it's kind of like if, they, if they're saying, hey, you know what? We want to make the pet trade illegal. Nothing other than dogs, cats, and canaries now. You know what I mean? And uh, we say, hey, you can't do that to me. Who, I won't let you. Who were you trying to wave and over? They, uh, they're gone. Oh, it wasn't <laughs> Phil? Okay. <laughs> no. Uh, and they're gone. Um, and they're gone. Wow, you messed me up there. Sorry. <laughs> uh, if I say, I'm not going to let you do that to me. I love these animals too much. I care. You can't take my pets away. They're going to say, yeah, you and who army? You know, you, you and what army? You and who else? Mm -hmm. Right? And I don't know. I, I just think, like, the, like, how many viewers? Let me ask you this. How many members does US Arc have right now? I don't know Paying the number. members. I don't know the number of members. Of course not. Nobody does. Unless they have a YouTube channel. Mm. Now all of a sudden it's broadcast. What if that number is super small? I will tell you, I actually have an idea of how many members they have. I'll tell you, it's smaller than you think. Really? Yeah. Which, those of us who are in the industry, we all push so hard and so many people around us push so hard that you think it's really big. <laughs> But honestly, it's a few people that are super dedicated that are funding this massively important, you know, effort. So, I, I would, wow. Hmm. I would hope there's at least 10,000. <laughs> Smaller than you think. I'll tell you what, if you go on the US Arc YouTube channel, we'll talk about that. You can find out how many there are. All right. Because there's way more than 10,000 people that have reptiles. Oh, yeah. And want to continue to have reptiles in the yeah, future. Yeah, absolutely. So, anyway. Um, anyway, that, that, you know, that kind of explains the banners that are behind us. We threw them up here. Um, we are going to start to do that. Anybody that's listening, obviously, we are small. We're a smaller podcast. And we have a core group of very supportive, amazing people who listen to this. 
So I would implore you guys that listen, please help support US Arc. And this is actually, it's cool because a lot of people are like, well, I don't want to go give my five bucks or whatever to become a member and all this stuff. And that's money and I got to figure out how to do it. And I'll, I'll just do it later and all that stuff. Hi. Um, I'm glad you're super talkative today because I've got a lot of talking to do this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to lose my voice, but that's what Joe is for. Um, yeah, I lost my train of thought. Sorry, I, mean, like I keep throwing you off. <laughs> Yeah, you're I, talking I, I about. Completely can't remember what I was talking about two seconds ago. <laughs> you're talking about US Arc and the subscriber count and what you can do. We know that this is Whatever. not the biggest podcast yeah. in the world. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you guys are awesome. Please support me in our effort to do US Arc. It's scary for me as a business owner for Reach Out Reptiles. We are cutting out half of our content from our channel that we built our business on. That's scary. That's very scary. YouTube has been a huge part of what we do. So I'm going out on a limb to do this, but I'm honestly, I'm doing it because I, I really feel like it's the right thing to do. And if not me, who else is going to do this? It's gonna be good. I hope so. I, ho I hope it's gonna be good. So I want it to be great for US Arc because even if my company suffers a little bit, you know, like financially or, or impact wise in the industry and stuff like that, because we're, we're backing out off this. I'll tell you, my subscribership, like I talked to our patrons and stuff, they're bummed about this. They know why. They love it, but they're bummed about this. What are you backing off of specifically? Like all, all channels content, like both channels content? No, the vlog channel is gonna go ahead and do the same thing. So currently what we do for Reach Out Reptiles, like I put out three videos a week on YouTube. We have a live stream, and then we have a produced video, and then we have our vlog video. Now the vlog video is actually not related to the business. That's kind of like a separate thing. Wait, so two, over two channels you have three videos a week? Yes. Okay. Correct. So Reach Out Reptiles, my yes. business channel, has two a week. Gotcha. Okay. okay. So out of those two, one's a live stream, one's a produced video. What we're going to do is back that down to one a week. The thing is people, I feel like, appreciate our produced videos as much as our live streams. And a lot of our produced videos are like educational and teaching people about superdors. We got 400 of those. You, you can pretty much learn whatever you want about superdors from our channel as it stands right now. We still have more stuff to stay and we're, we're still gonna continue to put it out. But what we're gonna do is alternate once a week, we'll release a video. One week it will be live, the next week it will be produced. Okay, that seems reasonable. I thought you were gonna say you just do all lives. No, no, I, I, cause I mean, you gotta have the produced stuff if you want good information. Cause yeah. it, it, you gotta sit down. No one would like sit through that. <laughs> so, um, but what will be really fun about it is we'll end up releasing them on the same time each week, which allows us to premiere every produced piece that we do. So once a week, you'll be sitting down with us live. You can chat and we'll react with you. And then the other time of week, it'll be produced but you can sit down and chat and we can react with you. Right. So I'm hoping to like up the community involvement while reducing the amount of content. That's my concept for okay. it. And then solid that other video per week that Thomas would be producing, he will now be editing, uploading, and, and everything a US Art video. All right. And we're not taking any pay or anything from US Art for this. So no, it's a, because I feel like we should be donating money to US Arc, not the other way around. And they have like a marketing budget. And I was like, great, spend it somewhere else. I'll donate this, you know what I mean? So it's not our channel. We don't get Google AdSense from it. <laughs> Honestly, I would love if they had 10 million subscribers and tons of sponsors and got tons of money and I don't need any of it. You know, that's not why we're doing it at all. I just feel like it needs to be done. We've committed to do this for one year, I told Phil. And that should launch it. And if other YouTubers are like, oh, how come they get to do the US Arc channel? I'm super jealous. Then go for it. Send content to US Arc, have them upload it, you know? Yeah. But I just felt like if you really want to start it well, you need somebody to care about it. And we'll put as much time into that as we do any of the videos on our channel. Totally. It's awesome. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to the first video. When, when do you think that's going to air? April. April. Yep. All right. Well, let's go get filmed. Let's record it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're actually going to record. So the first one will be like a channel trailer. And then I think the most important thing facing the industry right now is updates on the Competes Act. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do a full video with that uh, about that with Phil. 
Uh, and then we're going to record like an intro to a video about who is U.S. Ark and why should you give a damn. And then I'm going to get some footage, just cell phone footage, of vendors. The real people who are all here this weekend telling us why U.S. Ark is important. I mean, do you want to do some of that tomorrow? Yeah, all weekend. Whatever, okay. throughout the weekend. So that all is going to happen tomorrow. You and me are going to sit down with Phil in front of these, like, or me or whoever, or whatever are you want to do it. Sit down and have Phil give his spiel. Because I think we all want a direct from the horse's mouth update on exactly what's going on as this bill passes from... There's a bill that's threatening the entire reptile trade right now. And it's a stupid, like, little tiny bit of information that would reverse a U.S. Uh, a US Supreme Court decision in four pages thrown into a bill that's 3,000 pages long yeah. that passed in the House and now is going to the Senate Yeah, it I, needs I, to be stopped. I know you. Well, all right. Well, that, that was that's not Phil. us. That's Phil's cue. He's coming in. <laughs> all right. Let's roll out. Thanks for letting me chat about that. Bye, guys. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we had the headphones on for that. Searchable as a rep.